So you're trying to get hands-on experience in cybersecurity and you're not sure which is best? Have no fear because John is here. In this video, we're gonna talk all about different ways that you can get hands-on experience for cybersecurity. Some of the ways you might already know about or you might be starting from scratch. Either situation can get something from this content, so let's get started. Before we even dive into the content, I know that there's people who are frustrated with trying to get cybersecurity experience. You were sold a dream of diving into this great career field, maybe to hack some systems, and now you're hitting some roadblocks in finding an opportunity to get hired. Maybe you're already working in a tech job like IT, and you're having challenges trying to learn how cybersecurity is different. Maybe you have some experience in cybersecurity, but you wanna switch into a different area where you don't have experience. These are all legitimate situations that people find themselves in and they can all have some frustrations that are associated with them. The first thing that I'm gonna tell you to do is just breathe. Even though I know that the frustration is real, getting spun up about it isn't gonna help and it's likely gonna increase your stress level quite a bit. Okay, you still with me? Great. So when it comes to hands-on experience in cybersecurity, there's a few thoughts that come to mind and that people usually mention. For starters, getting hands-on experience for newbies is pretty challenging. When anybody's first starting to learn about cybersecurity, you don't know what you don't know, but honestly, that's like a lot of career fields. You aren't gonna know the different tools and technologies or even much about general terminology that we use. Everything you learn is basically new and it's like drinking through a fire hose. The next thing that I commonly hear is that it's too expensive to access actual real tools. Let's be honest here. Some of the best tools that we have in this career field are commercial grade tools that cost thousands of dollars, if not more, and that might be on a per year basis. I'm not sure about you, but even as somebody who's established in the cybersecurity career field, I'm not about to dish out thousands of dollars for tools just to try them out at home. The third thing that I hear a lot is that it's hard to get experience before having a job. This is kind of like the chicken and the egg comparison as far as which one came first. I can't get a job without experience, but I can't get experience without a job. Finally, it's very clear, or at least it should be clear, that hands-on experience can set you apart from your peers. Especially with the fact that getting hands-on experience is difficult, it can really make you stand out. As we go through this list of methods to get hands-on experience, I want you to keep in mind that new methods can evolve over time, but the methods in this list have worked for a long time and I don't see that changing anytime soon. Okay, let's dive into the methods. Self-learning is probably one of the most basic methods of getting hands-on experience. When I say self-learning, this includes book learning, watching videos, and trying things in a home lab. Most people are familiar with tutorials or walkthroughs of using various products not just cybersecurity products, and it's basically the same idea. This is kind of like experimentation, but you can also get ideas from various sources like YouTube. Self-learning is usually a free or very inexpensive way to test theories and just do random things without the fear of causing harm. It's pretty difficult to self-learn without a home lab of some sort, which might mean a separate powerful computer, your main computer to host virtual machines on, or many computer systems in your home. This is gonna teach you not only how to configure tools and technologies, but also how to troubleshoot them when things don't work right. When you're trying to use the self-learning method to learn things and get hands-on experience, and in general, one of the best things that you can do is actually go to the vendor's website and check out their official documentation. So here I have the Windows Server documentation website, and there are all kinds of different procedural guides and technical configuration guides that you can walk through and actually configure this stuff step by step. Something else that you can do is you can go to Google and actually search for configuration guides. So here I search for configure DNS on Windows Server 2022, and there is a quick start guide from Microsoft. If we go there and we look through this, this is actually the instructions on how to configure DNS for Windows Server. And then of course you'll get a bunch of different options to actually configure that. But all you have to do is just walk through this and you'll have a better understanding of how to configure some of this stuff. The other option is to go to Amazon and search for lab guides. So here I've searched for Windows Server 2022 labs and this will give you a bunch of results related to configuring different things on Windows Server 2022. And so you can just go on here and get one of these books and there's a whole bunch of different ones, but this will give you ideas of things that you can configure. Obviously, if you're searching directly for configuration guides or through the official documentation, you might not necessarily know what you need to configure or the different options that you have. And a book like this can give you some ideas and help kind of guide you along the path of what you should configure. Method number two is through certifications. 
There's a ton of industry certifications that exist, like the Security Plus from CompTIA, the OSCP, and many other options on the market. Certifications are basically a structured learning program because they have specific exam objectives to teach you, and generally the tools and technologies are all things that you can access for free or for cheap. Some certification training programs have practical hands-on exercises that are built into their platform, while others are gonna show you the tools, but it's up to you to download them. When I was starting my career, Cisco was the most expensive certification path that I pursued because I actually had to buy the equipment off eBay but that's not the case anymore because you can get things like Packet Tracer or other emulation software for free. A general downside of self-learning is that you're somewhat limited based on what you know or what you learn through experimentation. With certifications you're actually getting the expertise of professionals that are within the industry and have a better understanding for what's used in companies. That means you aren't going to get caught up using some random tool that nobody uses and then learn you wasted a bunch of time trying to master it. Certifications can also help you throughout the hiring process, but I'm not really going to dive into that for this video. When you're trying to identify the top certifications to go after, one of the best resources that you can use is finding actual job postings for the job type that you want and look at what they list. That's gonna show what employers are actually looking for. So that's one of the first things that I'll do is go to a website like Indeed, which is a job searching website, and I'll search for a job title that I'm interested in. So for instance, if I search for cybersecurity engineer here, this is gonna bring back a whole bunch of different results. And then I will actually go through this and just find a job posting that I like and I'll look through it for actual certifications. And you basically just scroll through here, and for instance, in this one, they list the CISSP, so that gives me a really good understanding that that is probably an important certification to go after if I'm trying to get this exact job. And then what you can do is, you can find a whole bunch of job postings and try to find trends of those certifications. Just like we did on Indeed, I'll also go to LinkedIn and search for jobs on there. So I'll search for cybersecurity engineer on here as well. And again, that's gonna bring a whole bunch of different results back. And then I can scroll through these and actually try to find if they list certifications on the job posting. Now the other option, especially if you're in the United States, is something called CyberSeek. So this is CyberSeek. If we go to explore heat map, this is gonna give us a heat map of the United States, and then we can click on a specific state and it's gonna give us more information about that state and the job openings that are available in that state. So if I click on Texas, and then I scroll down here, it's gonna give us a whole bunch of different information, but it's also gonna give us different certifications based on the job openings. So this is another great resource to identify the top certifications to go after. If you're enjoying the content so far, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. That way YouTube knows you enjoy the content. Also, let's take a second to talk about Cyber Training Pro. Are you tired of overpaying for cybersecurity training? Are you interested in training from industry professionals? Are you looking for cybersecurity career services? If you answered yes to any of those questions, then CyberTrainingPro.com is the perfect platform for you. At CyberTrainingPro, we're a one-stop shop for all your cybersecurity needs. We can train you for industry certifications or just improve your overall knowledge and skills in a certain area. Unlike other platforms, we don't stop there. We can also coach you throughout your career, practice your interview skills, or create a high-performing resume with our career services. CyberTrainingPro.com isn't just another training platform. Students get exclusive access to our private community where we go beyond training courses to provide additional content, tips and tricks, and engagement with both other students and staff. Look, by the year 2025, there could be as many as 3.5 million job openings in cybersecurity. With so much opportunity, why not maximize your career potential with a platform that cares about your success? Come join us at cybertrainingpro.com and start building your future today. Networking is the third method. Specifically for networking, this is more about meeting people and building your professional network. Although this isn't directly a hands-on activity, it can absolutely open doors for you with new opportunities. Say you go to a conference and people are looking for volunteers to try a new product. Well, that'd be pretty sweet and you can get some free experience. Networking can also be helpful for when you're looking for jobs and should never be overlooked. The best way to go about networking is to attend conferences like Black Hat, DEF CON, and a ton of others that exist go to workshops in your area, and meet up groups that are interested in cybersecurity. You can also learn a lot about tools or technologies where you should focus just by attending these events. Some popular groups to look at are ISC Squared, ISACA, and OWASP, 
just to name a few popular options. Now this is ISC Squared's website, and in order to become a member of ISC Squared, you do have to get certified with one of their certifications, but then there's different meetup events and things that you can go to. For instance, the Security Congress, that's an example of a meetup that you can go to if you're a member. A lot of times too, you can go to a lot of these meetups or these events, even if you're not a member of the association, but typically you're gonna have to pay or pay a different fee than if you were a member, so keep that in mind. This is the ISACA website. Now something that's different with ISACA is you can become a member of ISACA and not be certified, which is different than ISC Squared. And then of course you can be certified and become a member or be certified and not become a member, but there are perks like discounts if you're a member. And this is the OWASP website, so just like the others, they have different chapters that you can join and different meetups that you can attend. And this is actually the least expensive of all the options, but this is just another option. Now, OWASP is specifically concerned about application security and web security, so it's gonna be a different focus than the other groups. And ultimately, one of the things that's important is if you're gonna join one of these groups, join something that you're interested in or that you wanna learn more about because you're going to get a lot more out of it than if you don't care about what's being taught or what's being provided. The fourth method is hands-on practice. Now I know this video is all about hands-on practice, so let's talk about what I actually mean. Remember when I mentioned conferences? Well, a lot of times there are events like capture the flag competitions, which are also called CTFs, and other types of challenges where you can explore real world problems. If you look at villages at DEF CON on YouTube or similar types of things, these are great ways to explore what's going on in the real world. Of course, these experiences are limited in how long you can access them, but you might even participate in ones that give awards or other type of acknowledgements to the winners. How good do you think it's gonna look to an employer if you can win a CTF? It's gonna look amazing, but even just participating looks really good. This is the website for DEF CON, and DEF CON is a really popular hacker conference that you can attend, and there's different villages, and all kinds of training and learning opportunities at DEF CON. And if you're really into hacking, or that's something that interests you at all, again, this is a really good place to check it out and learn a lot about hacking from experts in the industry and meet other people within the industry that are interested in hacking as well. This is the website for Black Hat. Just like DEF CON, Black Hat is a really popular cybersecurity conference that tons of people from the industry go to. It's a little bit different than DEF CON because DEF CON is kind of like the underground hacker conference where Black Hat is a little bit more corporatized and it has a wider audience that it's trying to appeal to, but it's the same kind of idea. They're gonna bring in a lot of speakers, they're gonna have workshops and training courses and classes that you can take, and it's a really good experience that I highly recommend. This is SANS Cyber Range or NetWars. Now with NetWars, you can get an online version of it, but if we click Upcoming Ranges, this is gonna show us the events where they're having NetWars events. NetWars is basically like a capture the flag style competition where you're competing against other people or other teams and you're trying to find the clues or the flags or the codes before everybody else does so you can ultimately get a challenge coin. These are really popular at SANS events and I highly recommend these if you end up going to a SANS event. The next method is internships and entry level jobs. Did you know that you can gain experience and knowledge without actually working in a cybersecurity role? It always amazes me how people undervalue their experience in jobs like IT or help desk as if the experience is completely unrelated and cybersecurity is the siloed off area on its own. There are a ton of jobs out there that will give you related experience and help you network with employers and increase your chances of getting into a cybersecurity job. Each of these options has its place based on the situation that you're in, but I'm gonna tell you a secret right now. Experience holds the most weight when it comes to how competitive of a job candidate that you are. People sometimes put way too much emphasis on certifications or training and completely ignore the experience factor. When you're trying to find a job, whether that's an entry level job, a senior level job, whatever, or you're trying to find an internship, a website like Indeed where you can search for jobs is your best resource to find those typically. So one of the things you can do is you can go on here and you can search for cyber internship, for example and then we can see what comes back, or cyber entry level. 
And the thing that's gonna be a little bit hard is on some of these, you're gonna to have to actually go through them and determine if they are indeed entry level. Because obviously if they ask for something like 10 years of experience, that's probably not entry level. So you might even try to just search for something like cybersecurity analyst, which is a popular title, and then just go through and look at the actual experience requirements and see if that lines up. It's the same thing on LinkedIn. You can go on here and you can search for jobs. You can search for internships. You can look at the experience requirements and see if that matches what you bring to the table. The other thing that you can do is if you know the company that you wanna work for or that you're trying to work for, so let's say you wanna work for Tesla, well then you can actually go to their website and search for internships or search for entry level jobs. Sometimes internships don't always show up on these main job boards and you actually have to go to the companies to search for those internships or to find them. Question of the day, which of these methods are you planning on using or have you used in the past? Did I miss any methods? Let me know down in the comment section below. Trust me, I know it can be difficult to do some of this stuff. There are always gonna be barriers of some sort in your way throughout this career field. It's just how it is. With that being said, if you're determined and willing to think outside the box, you can absolutely set yourself up for success in almost any situation. As always, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Check out the description for more resources related to this video, and I'll see you next time.